It's the weekend and you want to escape the city. As the roads become quieter and more rural, you start to think of where to spend the night in your camper van. Somewhere off-road would be good with some hills to climb the next day or a nice coastal location with the sounds of the sea lulling you peacefully to sleep. The problem is that today there are thousands of us trying to do the same thing. It's not so easy to just stop and park overnight anywhere any longer. So what's the answer? I've been using camper vans for well over 40 years and I think we're on our 12th camper van at the moment and we love it as much as ever. The only problem is that there are over 360,000 other camper van owners in the UK, many of them as keen as we are to find a nice spot with a view, the perfect place to spend the night. My wife Gina and I have just spent slightly over two weeks exploring part of Scotland's coastline and for this trip, for the first time, I didn't rely on informal overnights or what some folk call wild camping. Instead, I was eager to discover the range of options we have as camper vanners and motorhomers and I was pleasantly surprised at actually how well served we are here in Scotland. And the good news is that the situation is improving all the time. We may not yet have the vast network of airs and overnight stops you'll find in continental Europe, but things are definitely getting better in Scotland. Many thanks to the recent uh, or the ongoing pandemic. After last summer, when it felt like half the world decided to spend their summer holidays in Scotland, the Scottish Government grant aided local councils to try and improve the infrastructure for camper vanners and motorhomers, and we're now just beginning to see the benefits of that. And at the same time, some more progressive communities and individual businesses have put out a welcome for camper vanners. And instead of calling for bans and local bylaws, uh, are creating informal, low-cost overnight parking spots. And of course, there are still hundreds of official campsites in Scotland. Some are all bells and whistles affair with glamping pods, swimming pools and restaurants, while others are simpler and usually cheaper, with somewhere to park overnight, electric hookup points or EHUs, toilets and somewhere to dump waste. Now, no matter what you think about campsites, we all at some point need somewhere to fill up with water, dump waste and rubbish, and maybe take a shower. Now, personally, I think washing's very much overrated, but I do get a wee bit shaky when the toilet cassette begins to fill up. And for me, that's when a night in a campsite becomes really necessary. So on a recent trip, we didn't wild camp, but used a range of options, including campsites. We spent several nights in community-run campsites that are normally a bit cheaper than the big national club sites or, 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 or private commercial sites. We used a couple of certified location or CL sites, in our case ones that were listed in the camper vanning, uh, the Camping and Camper Vanning Club, of which we're members. Uh, and these are usually small sites, often on farms and out of town, and there's usually a range of facilities. We used two of them on our recent trip, one just outside St Andrews and Fife, and one in the hills above Oban in Argyll. The St Andrews side didn't have toilets, but I could dump waste, fill up with water, and I had electric hookup. Best of all, though, were the views out across the fields to the Fife Coast and the North Sea, and all for 14 quid a night. The Oban CL was about two miles out of the town, and again, didn't have any toilets, but I could dump waste, fill up with water. There's no EHUs here either, but it only cost 12 quid. And the views across the wooded hills and out across the tumbled landscape towards Kruchen were superb. We had a very peaceful night here. The community-run site we used was in Port William on the Galloway coast. We parked on grass, had EHU, could dump waste and fill up with water, and all for £17 a night. We were parked right next to the sea, and the campsite was spacious and very well run by the Port William community. In comparison, we stayed at Lochranza campsite on the Isle of Arran for three nights 
And while there were no more facilities than at Port William, it cost us considerably more, £26 a night. Having said that, Arran is a popular location and the campsite here really is terrific and a lovely location and very peaceful. Seem to be very popular with those with young fam families, lots of great walks, cycle rides and even resident wildlife. There are huge variations in the cost of campsites and it's certainly not unusual these days to have to pay over 30 quid a night. I've even heard of one campsite near Arasig who was charging £52 a night last summer. So be careful out there. It's very easy to be ripped off. I mentioned there are more heirs appearing in Scotland and uh, thanks are due to the campaign of real heirs who are doing a fantastic job in this respect. Uh, this one is in Easdale in the Isle of Seal just south of Oban. And although there are no facilities, it's safe parking for a tender night. And Easdale is a lovely place to explore. For years, people parked the camper vans in the promenade at Spittle, just south of Berwick-upon-Tweed. But the council put a stop to it. A local cafe owner then decided to open an air. And while it's sufficient in the sense there's somewhere to park, it probably wouldn't suit everyone. This is the new air at Spittle, just south of Berwick-upon-Tweed. Um, it's behind a cafe and fish and chip shop, which are all closed up. Uh, there are public toilets, which are very, very clean, and there's electric hookup. But basically, it's a run-down car park and they're charging £20 a night to stay here. That's £15 for parking and £5 for ECU, which I think is a little bit steep um, for, for what's on offer. On the good side is there is electric hookup that works well and the toilets are spotlessly clean, looked after by Northumberland County Council. So it depends if you're willing to spend 20 quid on a rundown car park. Mm. Not sure I want to. Now, in comparison, over on the other side of the country at Metal Bridge, just south of Gretna, is an excellent Brit stop location at the Metal Bridge Inn. Now, the idea of Brit stops, of course, is that owners of businesses allow you to stay overnight in the car park in the hope you might spend some money in, in their business. Maybe a gift shop, a cafe, a pub, a restaurant, or in this case, an inn that does excellent bar meals. Now, the staff here have really put the flags out for camper vanners and motorhomers with waste disposal facilities, fresh water, and even a brand new toilet block. And the charge? Nothing. Zilch. Zero. Most people either buy a drink from the bar, as, as we did, enjoy a very, very reasonably priced bar meal. The only slight downside to this place is that you're fairly close to the busy M6 motorway and you might find it a bit noisy, although I have to say it didn't bother us in the slightest. Not so very far away is the excellent air at Castle Corner at Carlaverock. Now this must be one of the oldest airs in the country because I can remember stopping here in my camper van many, many years ago. There's no EHU, but there is a waste disposal uh, and it's a lovely woodland setting fairly close to the fascinating ruin of Carlaverock Castle. Now, I think the estate provides the facility and all they ask is a donation for upkeep. It's on the edge of a nature reserve and the bird life is superb with plenty of waders and geese on the Solway mudflaps. We just love this place. Perhaps the best night we had on our trip was also the one that gave us the biggest surprise. I'd heard that the Whistlefield Inn on the shores of Loch Eck in Cowell catered for camper vanners, so I rang them up. I was told there was a £20 charge per person for using the car park overnight, but the charge could be redeemed against food or drink in the hotel. We went for it. Bought our vouchers for 40 quid and later redeemed them for one of the best meals we've had anywhere for a long time. Gina had a pesto chicken pasta and I had the house speciality. A 10 ounce rump steak cooked at the table on a hot volcanic rock. It was wonderful. And all washed down with an excellent local IPA. That's one place we'll definitely be returning to. And a great blueprint for other hotels or restaurants to follow.
Now that only leaves one other overnight pack in place from our trip and that was spent on one of the forestry and land Scotland's Stay the Night Scheme car parks. This one was at Altnabrek near Cairnban and was very close to the Kilmartin Glen where you'll find some of the finest standing stones, Bronze Age cairns and cup and ring marked in the whole country. And it's within walking distance of the Cairnban Hotel. The Stay the Night scheme is in its second season but it's still a trial so I really hope it continues because it provides a brilliant service and I'll put details of the website down below here. Now schemes like this, some of the others I've mentioned, <coughs> are dependent on us, the campervan and motorhome community, using the facilities in a responsible manner. Most of us do, I'm very aware of that, but it only takes one or two bad eggs to spoil it for everyone. So there you go, wild camp or not, there's certainly a good range of overnight stopping places in Scotland and of course a couple I've mentioned are in the, the north of England and mostly at very reasonable prices or even free of charge. I know many of you will continue to find your own wild overnight camping spaces and that's okay but for those of you who want that little bit of security and knowing you won't get a knock at the door at two o'clock in the morning with someone asking you to move on there's a, a wide range of options available. And finally, the Highland Council had just become the first local authority in the UK to temporarily relax licensing regulations to enable landowners, farmers or community groups with suitable sites to provide continental style campervan stopovers. Small, simple, low cost short stopovers for motorhomes and campervans. Will we soon see an influx of new heirs in the highlands of Scotland? Keep in touch to find out. And now that summer is here, it's time to get out there, start exploring and enjoy the wild places. If you found this video useful, please think of maybe subscribing by clicking the button down below here. And please tell others about it. And if there's anything I've not explained well enough or if you need more info, please get in touch via the comments again down below. That's it for now. See you next time.